For billions of years, hydrogen fusion has powered the heat and light of our sun. But the mechanism behind the miracle, the conversion of hydrogen into helium by fusion, was only identified by physicists in the 1920s and 1930s. By the 1950s, the race to reproduce fusion reactions on Earth was underway in the Soviet Union, the United States, Europe and Japan. A machine called a tokamak quickly outdistanced others in performance and became the predominant concept. In November 1985, Mikhail Gorbachev and Ronald Reagan put forward the idea of an international project to develop fusion energy for peaceful purposes. The ITA project was born. The European Union and Japan joined the Soviet Union and the United States, and conceptual design work was launched. Increasingly detailed engineering work followed, until the final design of ITER was approved by the members in 2001. Five years later, with the new members China, South Korea and India, a site for the project was selected in France. The ITER organization was established by international agreement, and clearing and leveling works began on site under the responsibility of the French government. In August 2010, 25 years after the decisive encounter between Reagan and Gorbachev, construction started on the first buildings of the ITER scientific installation. The ITER headquarters was inaugurated in January 2013. Today, the site infrastructure required for the first plasma is 80% complete. The assembly of the ITA Tokamak was launched in May 2020 with the installation of the first major component, the base of the cryostat. Since then, the first of nine vacuum vessel sectors paired with two D-shaped toroidal field magnet coils have been lowered into the Tokamak pit. Scientific exploitation will begin in approximately four years with first plasma. Subsequent periods of experimentation and assembly will bring the machine to its full power configuration and fusion operation in 2035. ITER will open the way to harnessing the energy source of the sun and stars as a clean, safe and unlimited source of energy for humanity. So, that's a little bit about the ITER story. Now let's take a look at the science behind the project. We're all familiar with solids, liquids and gases. But did you know there's a fourth state of matter? Plasma, which makes up 99% of visible matter in the universe. On Earth, we come across plasma in a number of natural forms. For example, lightning or the northern lights, known as the Aura Borealis. But we also know how to make plasma and use it in our everyday lives. Take a flat screen television, for example. Or the fluorescent tubes that illuminate our public or commercial buildings. Atoms are composed of a positively charged nucleus of protons and neutrons, surrounded by a cloud of negatively charged electrons. When atoms are subjected to high temperatures, millions of degrees Celsius, the electrons are separated from the nuclei, creating an ionized gas that we call plasma. In the center of stellar bodies like the sun and the stars, gravitation creates the pressure and temperature that causes hydrogen nuclei to fuse. In these hot and dense centers, atoms never rest, and the hotter they get, the faster they move. In the sun's core, where the temperatures reach 15 million degrees Celsius, atoms collide at very high speeds and fuse. The fusion of light hydrogen atoms produces a heavier element, helium, and very large quantities of energy. To reproduce fusion in a laboratory on Earth, scientists use two isotopes of hydrogen, Deuterium, composed of one proton and one neutron, and tritium, composed of one proton and two neutrons. A plasma provides the environment in which these elements can fuse and yield energy. Creating fusion requires maintaining a very high temperature plasma inside of a torus-shaped chamber called a vacuum vessel. Huge magnets surrounding the chamber create a magnetic field capable of keeping the plasma in suspension away from the walls. What is the purpose of creating fusion in the laboratory? The demand for energy in the world continues to rise. However, the use of fossil fuels such as coal, gas and oil produces harmful pollution and greenhouse gases. Fusion fuels are widely available and nearly inexhaustible. 
Deuterium can be distilled from all forms of water, and tritium will be produced during the fusion reaction as fusion neutrons interact with lithium. Terrestrial reserves of lithium would permit the operation of fusion power plants for more than 1,000 years, while sea-based reserves of lithium would fulfill needs for millions of years. Fusion reactions release four times as much energy as nuclear fission reactions at equal mass. Hydrogen fusion does not emit harmful toxins or other greenhouse gases, nor does it produce high-activity, long-lived nuclear waste. As a new source of clean, safe and reliable energy, fusion could make a positive contribution to the challenges facing our planet. In order to achieve this, the world's largest erector set had to be produced. 1 million components, at least 10 million parts, the Ita Tokamak is the world's largest erector set. Components are fabricated by each of the members in factories at home and delivered to Ita. This in-kind contribution system means that all participants are learning to build a fusion reactor. Japan, for example, is contributing 9 of 19 toroidal field coils, each one weighing nearly 350 tons, as much as a fully loaded Boeing 747. The Eta Central Solenoid, a tall magnet that sits at the center of the machine, is 18 meters tall and weighs 1,000 tons, is being manufactured in the United States. Korea is contributing four of the nine vacuum vessel sectors, two of which have already been delivered. The European Union, among other contributions, is responsible for all buildings, five vacuum vessel sectors and five out of six poloidal field magnets. Russia is in charge of many of the coil power supply systems, as well as the smallest poloidal field magnet. India's largest contribution is the ITER cryostat, whose segments are fabricated at home, then shipped to ITER and assembled on site. China is manufacturing the magnet feeder system, or more than 1,600 tons of equipment to supply electricity and cryogenic fluids to the magnets. These components and many other travel by boat to the French port of marseille fosse mer They then travel by road to reach ITER. Three years of large-scale works were carried out on a dedicated itinerary to ensure that ITER's largest and heaviest components could be brought safely to the ITER site. Once at ITER, the components are either stored or prepared for installation. ITER machine assembly was officially launched in July 2020 in the virtual presence of the President of France and high-level officials from every ITER member. At the end of the first phase assembly, ITER will produce its first plasma. Some components must be pre-assembled before their insertion into the tokamak pits. Sometimes that entails upending them to virtual position with the help of a purpose-designed tool. The ITER assembly hall is equipped with bridge cranes that can lift 1,500 tons. This is the main tool for positioning components into the tokamak pit. The installation of the last major component, the cryostat lid, will mark the end of core machine assembly. And the beginning of commissioning and operation. So that's the who, how and why. Now let's take a look inside the project to see what stage is at today. The site is located in the south of France and it's here where scientists are trying to reproduce and harness the power of a star. It is said that the construction phase of the ESA project is now around 80% complete. Let's take a look inside the most anticipated project mankind has ever embarked upon. Inside the giant assembly hall is where the largest ETA components are handled and assembled. Like the huge magnetic toroidal field coils that will one day help channel super hot plasma so the ions can fuse together to release energy. Also being built in the assembly hall is the 18 meter hall central solenoid magnet that is being produced by the United States. Made up of six modules, this powerful solenoid will initiate the heating process that will ultimately allow fusion reactions to take place. The Steady State Electrical Network was commissioned in January 2019, and the pulsed power electrical system has been largely installed. 
At the cryo plant, the liquid nitrogen storage system is in service and commissioning of the liquid helium system is underway. These giant tanks are filled with helium. The cryo plant will provide cooling fluids to the superconducting magnets, eight massive cryo pumps and the thermal shields. From here, they will travel along the process lines 13 meters above ground and through a bridge that leads to the Tokamak building. In total, about 5 kilometers of cryo lines will distribute gaseous and liquid helium. ITER's water cooling system will be capable of removing 1.2 gigawatts of heat. Equipment testing and inspections have been completed with subsystems currently being commissioned. Works in the manufacturing facility for the poloidal field coils are nearing completion. Two completed coils has so far exited the facility with two more in the final stages of production. Installation of equipment is also underway in the radio frequency building for the Electron Cyclotron Residence Heating System, one of the three external heating systems. High voltage power supplies on the ground floor will feed power to the 24 electromagnetic wave generators called gyrotrons. Work is also progressing on the ITER control building. Here is where the many scientists, engineers and operators will monitor and analyze the data from each pulse. Next door, the giant server room is almost finished and ready to be powered up by the end of this year. One of the last major infrastructure components is the housing for the neutral beam power supply, which is currently 40% complete. The steel frame for the twin high voltage holes are anchored in massive concrete slabs. The neutral beam injection is the most powerful of ITER's external heating supplies and will supply 33 million watts of the necessary 50 million watts of input power. The twin injectors will use electrical voltage to accelerate particles to insane speeds before neutralizing them in order to penetrate the magnetic cage and turn their kinetic energy into plasma. ITER's neutral beam system is built to deliver 1 million volts for up to one hour. To put this into perspective, the jet fusion reactor in the UK can deliver 130,000 volts for a few seconds, while the Euro-Japanese JT60SA fusion reactor will reach 500,000 volts for a few minutes. The power supply infrastructure for this system is absolutely unprecedented, and it's no wonder that it represents around 60% of the system's cost. If you found this video interesting, please like, subscribe and comment below, as well as turn your notifications on. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.